don't know this game, um, or if you have better hobbies than me, it's an arcade classic. Um, it's uh, Daytona USA, and you sit in a big plastic chair, you put in $2 each, and if you can manage to get in sync and push the accelerator at the same time, you can play with up to six friends. Um, so <clears throat> uh, recently I've made a change in careers, and until then, uh, the only time that I would consider changing careers, um, or changing jobs, let alone changing careers, uh, was if I needed to, um, or if a new opportunity just arrived at my feet. So, um, <clears throat> I'm terrible at Daytona, by the way. Um, but my recent experience of finding a new direction was a little bit like how I play. Uh, there was no obvious reason why I was doing it, and uh, there was a lot of off-roading involved. <laughs> Okay, so uh, it was about a year ago now that I went back to study, but in the time leading up to that, I was here on the green course, um, the easy one with a lot of laps. Uh, there was uh, the odd tricky corner, but uh, it was more or less, um, I was pretty familiar with the course. So I started thinking, what's next? And um, <clears throat> I wasn't sure. So all the typical options that I would pursue uh, just weren't interesting for me. And I started having these weird open-ended meetings with people. Uh, I would sit down and uh, I, would, I didn't have much of an agenda and I felt kind of weird about it. And we would usually talk about their journey and their experience and then I would hope that they would just at the end say this, um, give me this piece of wisdom which would enlighten the journey ahead. Um, that didn't happen and I know better now that that's not how things work. Um, but one of these meetings, uh, someone did say to me, uh, you should write down times at work that you've really enjoyed. Um, so I had a piece of paper and um, it turns out one of my favourite days at work was when we had a large annual project uh, go wrong. Um, <clears throat> there was the switch had just been flicked and everything broke. Social media was blowing up and there was this um, flurry of emails that uh, everyone was panicking and it went late into the day uh, and it was so much fun. <laughs> um, I, I didn't say anything to my colleagues at the time, um, but I, I sort of had this list of times at work I had enjoyed and things I liked. So under the column of things that I liked, I added um, likes fixing things. Uh, I also had in the um, times at work that I'd really enjoyed, um, this job I had once where I had to, um, it involved a lot of coordination. I had to collect things like um, a photo of a tree where the bark pattern formed the face of an old man, a conch shell, and a four-seater spa pool made out of sand. Um, and I had no money or time to do this. Uh, so it was like a weird kind of amazing race. And um, what I really liked was that I had to try again and again and again to figure out ways that I could try and make this happen with no budget or time. And um, yeah, so on this list of things that I liked, I had um, fixing things and I had also added um, light solving problems. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I was having these meeting with, meetings with people, trying to figure out what I liked, what the heck I might do next. And, um, uh, but rewind a couple of years ago, a couple of years before that, I um, had just been made redundant and I was looking online for opportunities and I came across this job description online and it said, um, I think you could describe the general tone of it as cautionary, um, <laughs> which is weird for a job description, but there you go. Uh, and it, uh, to give you an idea of how it read, it, an excerpt from it uh, went something like, um, must be comfortable working with extremely technical information in a technically heavy environment. And um, I pictured myself there and it was hard and boring and I was alone in a basement and it was dark and it was not fun at all. And I applied and <laughs> because, <laughs> because um, I thought that um, even if it's horrible, it's not going to be forever and I wanted to learn something about tech. So uh, it turned out to be really great, by the way. <laughs> but um, the team I worked on um, worked a lot in the um, developer, uh, in the tech community. And uh, we were having a team meeting one day. We needed someone to head along uh, to an event as a point of contact. And the... Um, and as it happened, um, most of the, they happened to all be guys. Most of the guys who had the technical background who would usually go uh, were traveling or sick um, or on leave or something like that. 
Uh, and then uh, particularly supportive teammates suggested maybe I could go. Uh, so I went along. Um, actually, the conference happened to be Gather as well. And um, from, <laughs> which, yeah, it was awesome. And then from there, I sort of went to another event and then another conference. And I sort of had this um, collection of experiences build where I was exposed more and more to um, developers and, the, and tech. And uh, together with this list I'd written of things that I supposedly liked, uh, I started thinking more and more about becoming a software engineer. Um, oh, yeah. oh, next slide. Thanks. Um, yeah, so um, that brings me to uh, another one of these meetings I was having. Um, I'd been getting behind the wheels. So I'd been um, building some of these experiences and, and getting a feel for more of what it might be like. <clears throat> And uh, one of these meetings I was having with someone, they, um, we sat down, she was a successful lady, uh, well respected, and I had the chance to meet her through work, and uh, she'd been kind enough to sit down with me and do some brainstorming. And, um, and, she's, and we had on a whiteboard a few different roles listed and some points about those roles. And uh, I hadn't, I just wasn't interested in any of them. And um, she said, well, is there anything else that you might be thinking about? And I said, um, I hadn't said it out loud to that point, but I was sort of like, oh, I don't know, maybe software engineer? And she looked at me and she, uh, she kind of frowned a bit and she wrote it on the board anyway. And then she turned to me and she said, Anna, you have to be extremely analytical to be a software engineer. Do you think that's something you would enjoy? And I thought, um, oh, geez, no one's ever said you're extremely analytical. So I thought, oh, maybe not. And then... Um, <clears throat> I remember really clearly what she did next. She picked up the whiteboard pen and then drew a line through Software Engineer. Um, so this was about two years ago, and um, just two weeks ago, I got back from um, uh, my first experience working as a software engineer, and it was awesome. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> so um, it was a little bit like when you're trying to decide between two alternatives, and you flip a coin, and you get heads, and then you immediately know you wanted tails all along. So <laughs> it was a bit like that. Um, next slide. So, um, if you've played Daytona, you'll be familiar with this choice that um, <laughs> you have to make. Sometimes I would choose manual just um, to feel like a real driver, um, but then it, it didn't really seem to make much difference, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, when I went back to study and made this, made this change, um, uh, there, was, it, there was a lot of things that... Um, you know, there's a lot of um, skills that kind of carry over, and sometimes things that seem like a big change weren't really that much of a big deal. You know, you're still driving, and you're on the course that you've selected um, to make a tenuous connection. But the, <laughs> um, yeah, I think if you're considering making a big change, and you're and you're a bit worried maybe about um, bundling up everything you've learned and everything you've done, and then chucking it away and starting again, uh, it's not really going to be like that at all. Our next slide. Um, so yeah, and for fans of Daytona, um, this uh, scene might bring back some memories. This is the pit stop. You would be mandated to go here if your car got be too beat up. And it was always terrible because it took so long. And you could see in the like top corner like the rest of the race going round. And you're like, no. <laughs> um, but uh, this is what it felt like going back to uni for me. I felt like I was going to pit stop. Um, but the... Um, but in Daytona, if you've got a few laps left, it was always worth it because you drove faster afterwards. And it feels the same for me. Going back to uni was, uh, was worth it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, I think like at the start, uh, uh, this time last year when I started studying again and in November, December when I'd started my first sort of foray into um, the change in uh, careers, um, it was like taking that difficult course. There was a lot of sharp corners and, um, but it, was, it also only lasted two laps. It, it, didn't, it wasn't forever. So um, I, think if you're, I think if you want to take anything out of this talk, it's that um, give the difficult course a go and if nothing else, um, taking some different corners and some different turns makes the game more exciting. So.